Good thing about that show. Water is hydrating. How are you guys? Good, how are you? Good. Good. So I would just love to ask you, why mermaids? How did this all get started? Why? Why mermaids? Why mermaids? Um, you know, like I had said on the panel, it, it, it started with my love of Jaws. Okay. Um, and at, at that time, um, when I first came up with the idea, the Pirates of the Caribbean movie on Stranger Tides had just come out. And we sort of saw a different, more aggressive depiction of mermaids. And it just felt like it was one of those mythologies that is global, that it, that it sort of got pushed into a very specific kind of box, the way that they were depicted. And it just felt really exciting to like do a completely new take on this classic mythology. And then, you know, Emily and I just started to build out the characters in the town and really make it come alive. But um, that, that was sort of the genesis of the idea. I loved what Eric had done with it because it felt like this, of course, giant mythology, and yet it was so grounded and real, which is always what I love. So marrying those two things, I felt was just such a brilliant mm -hmm. idea of his. And then you're getting into the actual design of our mermaids. It was really fun to sort of come up with unique takes. Like, for example, the classic mermaid is upper half human, lower half fish, but ours is a much more unified creature. So it's, it's thinking like, okay, if these things really were out there and they could be, what would they look like? And we sort of gave them certain design elements. There's a really aggressive tail spike they have that they can use as a weapon. And so it's really fun just to sort of let our imaginations run wild with what these creatures could look like. And having watched the pilot and seen that they are a little bit darker than the usual mermaids that we're used to, how do y'all shape that to fit like the freeform audience? Interesting, because I think Freeform, with their own change of kind of um, audience, they've been they've been seeking a new audience mm -hmm. as well, and so they were very much on board with going toward the dark side and grounding things and making it about story and mythology and darkness and not just doing a Disney version. Um, in their rebranding, it really yeah. helped our concept as well. It, it was so funny. I remember every time, even when we met, and, and everyone who had heard, oh, Freeform's doing, doing a mermaid yeah. show, mm -hmm. everyone thinks H2O. And then everyone said, and then we read the script and we're like, oh, wow, this is actually a lot more interesting than we were expecting. Mm -hmm. And you know, like Emily said, like it, it sold sort of the final months that it was ABC Family transitioning into Freeform. And so it's been really fun to be part of that transition and rebranding and they've really pushed the darkness they, they want it to go dark and, and complex and they've really pushed and embraced that in a great way it's been amazing in yeah. Way, yeah yeah speaking of dark and complex we started off with a mermaid is there any other land or sea character that you would like to introduce and come up with on the show um, there will be um, more mermaids that come on to land, you know, but, but the one thing that I think is, is really important with shows like this is that the mythology doesn't get too massive. I, I think a lot of times shows can get lost in their mythology and all of a sudden like, okay, we're running out of ideas, let's all of a sudden let's turn them into mermaid zombies. Or, you know, so we just want to keep our mythology very real and simple and grounded and really go deep with it. Someone had recently asked us, so is there a mermaid world down there, like a city? Mm. Is there a mermaid city? And I think we want to stay away a little bit from ideas that maybe people have done before that you might think of as the usual. And the idea being that just like on land, everything's very complicated underwater as well. There may be other cultures that they don't necessarily know about and that they inhabit the entire world. And as we were saying earlier, 95% of the ocean is in So I don't think we'll be coming up immediately with other cultures that look, you know, other kinds of uh, creatures that we'll see, but there may be variations in things. And within the mermaids themselves, there's a lot of variation. Exactly. I mean, Rin is sort of the one who's very fearless and goes onto land and is more open to human interaction, whereas others have like are much more afraid of humans, have a much more aggressive stance towards them. So there's a lot of variation within the mermaid Just world like we have. Humans. Yeah, right. <laughs> kind of as a follow-up, we've got the mermaids. What about mermen? Well, <laughs> stay, stay tuned. <laughs> Even in the first block of shows that we just are finishing up, you'll see a, a, a hint of other 
people, um, and that you know is will be gorgeous. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about the title of the series. And so there's very much like the literature and sirens and the mythology and the call and the song, but is there some more like symbolic meaning behind that, with the relationship between the characters as well? I give credit to the network who ultimately. The, sh the pilot had been titled something else, and there was a conflict of interest with another film and couldn't use it, and so they really, in the end, came up with, and it has, it has taken on a life of its own as well, because sirens have such a particular meaning, and it's fed us creatively, thinking about all those different meanings and what it can mean to the show. So that was their title, and we just embraced it, yeah. And, and definitely, I mean, a, a theme that really started to emerge in the season was this idea of obsession and addiction and the way that plays out in so many different ways with so many different characters that it really feels now like the right title. Yeah. Well, we see the, um, I guess, military group or something come in and take Donna. So are some of the family issues that might come be coming going to be put on hold to deal with maybe the, this military group coming in? And what we'd love to do is do all of it. Yeah. Because the more danger there is, the more story we'll have. And so all these things converging at once. Who in the town is finding out and what is happening with that and people coming in and then this giant threat that again, we don't want to turn this into War of the Worlds or something. But the idea that they don't want to create panic in the world and they may be, it may be a covert operation and we'll just keep it, I think, grounded in a way that it won't feel like the show's gone out of control and gotten too big. And we don't want the military rolling right. into that little town. Right. You know? I mean, the military plot gives is good for sort of adding tension mm -hmm. at select moments, okay. but you know, it really is a show about the relationships and our main characters. And it's interesting, even sort of our main military guy, like, his arc throughout the season, he's not just sort of this black and white villain. Like, he actually starts to have an interaction or relationship with some of the mermaid and starts to change his attitudes towards it. So it's always fun to play in those dramatic gray areas. Yeah. Do you guys believe in mermaids? I mean, I, I truly, like, we don't know what's down there. Like, like I said in the panel, like, literally last week, I don't know if you guys saw, they pulled up this, like, little Loch Ness monster-looking creature. And I, I'm kind of looking at it and being like, wait, did our special effects people, like, make this thing? Because it, it looked yeah. like I couldn't believe it's actually down there. Maybe not in the way that, you know, we perceive them creatively, but there could be, there are, we know, things we don't know about. Yeah. So I don't know that they're, you know, talking, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Thank you, guys.